Our focus this evening will be on the futures trading option. Okay, so here um, on the Binance Exchange, once you come in here to the homepage this way, once you log into your account, you want to come to derivatives. Okay, once you click on derivatives, you want to, there are other options you see here once you click on the derivatives, okay? Um, but our focus is going to be the USDTM features. Okay, so here for the features trading, we have the USDTM features, we have um, um, USD radar, we have the coin M features, and then we have these other ones. But for the coin and the USD, the difference is that if I'm doing this, okay, if I'm going with the USD M features, it means that I need to have USDT or BUSD to be able to use this option. So I am trading with BUSD or USDT and I get settled in BUSD or, B, um, or USDT. Okay, rather when you, um, um, on the other hand, when you go with the coin M features, you need to have Bitcoin, you need to have Ethereum, you need to have BNB, you understand? You need to have the coin itself. So when you trade with Bitcoin, you get settled in Bitcoin and so on. So those are the difference between these. So we'll just go ahead and click on the USDTM features. All right, so once you click on the USDTM features, it brings us to the features trading interface. This is what the Binance features trading interface looks like. Okay, so here, everything you need to know is um, first, when you come in here, you want to select the coin that you want to trade. The coin you want to trade is what you want to select. And that the option to select that is what you see right here. Okay, um, here you see that the coin that is selected, which we are seeing the chart right here is um, USD, um, Ethereum USDT. Okay, so if you want to select, uh, you can go ahead and just click on, on that option there. And then you can select, okay, you see all of these ones that are favorite um, is because I just favorite them so that I don't need to start searching for them whenever I come in here, okay? But if you want to search for any coin, for instance, if you want to trade, let's say Solana, you just go ahead and just type in Solana and then you get the Solana BUSD and then Solana USDT, okay? So um, you go ahead and just, you know, trade any of that. Once you select the coin, you see the coin you want to trade, you go ahead and select it and it will load up both the chart, okay? Um, the other books, everything, every detail you need to get about that uh, particular coin you want to trade will be displayed here, okay? And then when you select the coin, another thing you want to take note of is um, this statistic showing up right here, okay? These are the statistics for this particular coin that I'm trading. This is the current price, okay? And then you see the market price, the index, then the funding, okay? The funding, it will tell you the percentage that, you know, the next funding rate will be, and then the time. So this is going to happen four hours from now, approximately five hours from now, okay? And then it tells you, you know, the change in the last 24 hours. Okay, the change in the last 24 hours and then the high of the last 24 hours and the low of the last 24 hours, meaning that in the last 24 hours, Ethereum got up to 1,800 and then the lowest it went to was 1,511. Okay, and then here you have um, the volume traded um, in the last 24 hours. Okay, um, that is in Ethereum. This, this number you're seeing here is in Ethereum, meaning that 400, and 29 million or thereabout, okay? Ethereum has been traded in the past 24 hours on the Binance exchange. And then the value in USDT is what you see here, okay? So they higher these numbers, these figures you are seeing here. It means that uh, this is Ethereum, you pay attention to these numbers when you are trading some old coin that are not too popular, okay? If you are trading on old coin that are not too popular, you should be looking at, you know, the volume traded for that coin in the last week. 24 hours, is it reducing, is it, you know, going high and the rest, okay? These are some of the things you consider when you are doing both your fundamental and technical analysis, or when you're analyzing a coin you want to trade, okay? So aside this, this is the chart, all right? Here you have your chart for this particular coin, okay? So on the chart here, you have the original, which is the default chart for Binance, and then you have the trading view, okay? So with the trading view option, you have this drawing options here at run here, okay? These measurement tools and drawing options and with the trading view, that's why I prefer using the trading view. So always switch from the original to the trading view. 
this is my own personal preference. So if you prefer the original, okay, you go ahead with it, but I normally use the trading view, all right? And then you have another option here that tells you that it's called the depth, all right? So if you click on this depth option, let me, this is what the original chart looks like. Let me click on it, okay? This is the original chart. You see that it is playing those measurement tools, those ad additional tools to analyze the market, okay? Are no longer there. But when you go to the trading view, you have that option. So Binance, you know, deem it fit to embed the trading view um, chart here. And then for the depth, if you click on the depth, this is what it looks like. It's just a, a graph showing you the battle between buyers and sellers. So the green option is for buyers. And then the, the red option is for sellers. So here, if the green, just like you're seeing here, is, is bigger or higher than that of the, the red, you see that the buyers are the ones who are currently holding the market right now. Okay, in most cases, it is equal. In most cases, you see the, the red will go higher and stuff like that. So that is what you see here on the depth, okay? So um, and I normally leave this on trading view, okay? Down here, I will show you how to add up this indicator when I get there, but normally this is my setup for now, okay? And then, um, which is the, um, um, what I'm using here is the RSI, okay? Then here, you get your other books, okay? Your other books are here. So when you are using limit order, all right? When you are using limit order to place any order, you are market maker. Okay, you are market maker. And then whenever you're using limit order to make um, place orders, your orders will be showing up here, just like this people's orders are showing up here. These are people who are ready to sell, okay? And then these are people who are ready to buy, all right? So these are the prices at which they are ready to buy are what you're seeing here. And then the quantity of the coin they are ready to buy, you see them here. So the sellers, you see the price they are ready to sell. And then the quantity of the coins they are ready to, you know, the sell and the rest, you see all of that here, all right? So these are for, for market makers. This is how their order showed up here. Let's say you put in an order to sell or buy Ethereum at 1,800. The order will not be placed until um, Ethereum gets to that price, all right? Meaning that for the meantime, your order will be, you know, blinking up here, depending whether you want to buy or you want to sell. So when this market moves and get to that level, then automatically it will be, um, you know, it will be filled and then you leave, you are removed out of the market, then other people's own will equally be going. Now, another thing I want you to pay attention to is the difference. This is the current price, okay? The, the difference in what people are selling. In most cases, people are just selling like uh, with the difference of 10 cent, 5 cent, or buying with a difference of 10 cent, 5 cent. And the reason for that is because of the quantity they are buying. So if it is $1 difference because of the quantity that is involved, they are making a whole lot of money per trade. Okay, so you see here, uh, even when the market is 1,711, somebody is ready to sell 1,712, okay, 13 cent, and it continues to go like that. So the same thing you see for the, the the buyers as well all right so this is your other book and that is um yeah basically you don't have to do anything here. you just need to know that these are trees that are pending okay when it gets to that person's turn the person is filled and then they are removed out of the market it goes to the next person turn and the rest okay and then you see statistics for the trades okay these are for trees and the rest then on this other option here yeah, this is where all of the trades will be carried out this is where we have our trade carried out Okay, so when you select any coin here, it comes by default, it comes in the cross mode. So here we have both cross and isolated mode. I'll come back to that. Oh, yeah. All right, so you have cross mode and then you have um, the leverage, okay? So normally what I advise for beginners, you don't need to trade with cross mode. Um, when Let me click on that and show you. Okay, so if I want to change this from cross to isolated, just click on the cross, okay? If it is isolated that is here, that you see there, let me confirm this. If you select any coin and you see isolated here and you want to go with the cross mode, okay, just click on the isolated and it will pop up this way. Okay, so once it pops up, you have cross and then you have isolated. So when you select any of these, Binance gives you a description of what, you know, that is all about. But the simple explanation to this is that if you trade with cross mode, Okay, if you pay attention here, whatever I have here as my balance, 
It means that if I open a position, which I will show you in a moment, if I open a position and I'm risking $100 out of the balance I have here to open that position, okay? I'm, I'm equally risking the whole of this account balance I have on my futures account because I am using cross mode. Now the risk in, uh, here is because is when I get liquidated, Okay, if, if for any reason I don't put stop loss and the rest and I get liquidated, I will lose the whole of this because I am using cross mode. But if I use isolated mode and I have, even if I have a $100,000 here and the trade I open is only a trade that cost me $100, $10 or thereabout, it means that if for any reason I get liquidated, it is only that $10 I am losing, not the whole account balance. So that is the difference between cross and isolated mode. So. As a beginner, it is always advisable to use, you know, to be on the isolated mode, okay? So you go ahead and click on confirm. And then after that, after you've selected the, you know, margin mode you want to trade with, the next thing is to select the leverage. Now, uh, why people, uh, maybe you might have heard that a lot of money in futures trading, the same way you can make a lot of money in futures trading, maybe grow your $100 to a thousand or even more, is the same way you can lose that money um, you know, with one click. And the reason for that is because of leverage, okay? There are liquidations. The reason why there are liquidations is because you are using leverage. So what the exchange does is that they give you that, they give you, you know, that freedom to use any amount of money. You, For instance, if I have $100 and I'm using 100x leverage, okay? 100x leverage means that I am using 100 times that amount of money. So uh, uh, hundred, my hundred dollar now will now be worth, you know, hundred times that amount of money. Which should be hundred. If I use hundred S leverage, that should be hundred dollars. Should be giving me is it um, ten thousand or hundred thousand? I don't. I, I can't really say. Okay. So you are using like if I use ten, I am or forty. I'm using. I'm going to be doubling my money up to forty times. All right. So that is what leverage is. Now, since you are using leverage to trade, what the exchange does is that there is a limit they give to you. If your predictions are not right and the market is going against you, there is a level you will get to. They will get the account liquidated because they want to secure their own money. They don't want you to just, you know, waste their money in the market. That is why there are liquidations. Okay. So because of this, it is always advisable if you are still a beginner to go between 1x leverage to um 10x leverage okay as you continue to advance you can increase to you know um to 20 years leverage 40 years leverage 50 years leverage but whenever you see opportunity that you are very sure of just like what happened to luna okay if you have gotten the alert earlier and then you saw that luna was pumping you can use 100s leverage and then just wait when it moves to let's say one percent two percent roe or thereabout you just take profit but on a safe mode okay um, just trade between 1S leverage to 10S leverage, okay? So here you adjust the leverage you want to use. Once you select the leverage, go ahead and click on confirm. So meaning that if I trade any position and open here, all right, I'm using 10S leverage, um, it will be costing me, you know, less than what I'm supposed to pay, okay? So that is basically it. And after that, you have the uh, market orders here. All right, the ones that are more popular is the limit order and the market order. Limit order is that um, currently the price is at 1,000, 1,700. Um, Let's say after doing your analysis, you see that there are, you know, resistance in the chart. There are support in the chart, you know, support areas and resistant area. Uh, now, why, the way resistance and support work in the market is that the market doesn't just go in one direction. Okay, it moves in a, a snake format, all right? So when the market moves up, there is there will always be a hold up on top, which will serve as a resistance. So it goes and kills that resistance level, and then it reverses back again, okay? When it reverses back, it will come back to kiss the support level, it goes back again. It go, you know, it repeats that often, and then before you know it, it can either break through to go upward or go downward. So those ones, when you detect that, that is when you now say, oh, this is at the resistance level. Let me wait when it gets here. There is every probability that the market will reverse, but you now say, oh, when it gets to 1,800, that is when you use limit order. Okay, you are setting the price ahead or be even below what the price is currently trading at. Okay, but when you use market order, okay, when you use market order, you are 
trading immediately instead of your order to be pending as a limit order you become a market a taker all right so we have takers we have makers makers are those who place orders with limit orders and then takers are those who you know place orders with market order you are taking the market immediately you don't want to wait you don't want to waste time and the rest okay and then they feed these two people pay equally differs the, both the makers and the takers so you come in here and click on market if i place any trade now automatically it will enter the market immediately all right without wasting any time all right so then um the slider here you can either add let's say i want to trade one ethereum if i click on one ethereum here below here okay where you have this um open long and open short once because I added now I'm using market order, okay, meaning that we'll, whatever the market order is at that moment, once I click on either open or long or open short, it will be placed with the market order. Now I want to trade one Ethereum by default, okay, whether I want to buy or sell, if I want to do that, it will cost me $1,714 to be able to trade this one Ethereum, okay, but because I am using 10x leverage. This is what it will cost me to open a long position. Instead of 1,700, it will cost me 172. Then if it is to open a short position, it will cost me the same around you know, that range, but you know, the, the different of $1. So if I open a short position, it will cost me 171, okay? And the reason for this is because I am using leverage. Now, if I go ahead and increase that leverage and trade the same one Ethereum, instead of costing me 171, the money will be lesser because I am using a higher leverage. Let me show you that if I click on the 10x leverage and then make it like 40x leverage, okay? So we have increased it like three times of whatever we're trading before. And I want to trade the same one Ethereum. If I click on one Ethereum here, you see that instead of costing me $117, this time around, it is costing me just $46. That is what leverage can do for you. So I can use $46 to trade one Ethereum. And if the market goes in my favor, it means that with the 43 or 44 dollars or then about, I can be making hundred dollars in the market. I can make two hundred dollars. I can even make up to a thousand dollars, depending on how long you stay in the market and how far the market moves. All right. So you see that you're risking little and then you're making more. Another thing you should know is because you are using this leverage. All right, this high leverage, you can equally get liquidated as um, very soon or thereabout, okay? The liquidation gap is always very close. So the higher the leverage, the closer your liquidation, but the lower the leverage, the further your liquidation, all right? And then um, when you're placing your trade, you equally have the take profit, okay? You can set your take profit and stop loss before you even place a trade, okay? As for take profit and stop loss level, you can set it as a placing the trade, or after you've placed your trade, you can go ahead and set that as well. Okay, so it's not a must, you must go ahead and set it. So if I check this off, these things, this take profit will go off, meaning that if I place a trade, I can go ahead and set, you know, my take profit and stop level. Okay, so normally when I place my trade, I don't even bother to, you know, you know, put this trade, um, take profit and stop low, except when I'm using limit order. It is only limit order because I can close my system, close my phone, go about my daily activities. When I'm using limit order, I'll go ahead, you know, and put take profit and stop loss on the out there about so that whenever the trade is placed, this will not help to secure, um, you know, profit or even secure the losses that I'm, I'm going to, you know, incur in the market. But if I'm using market order, I don't need to set take profit or stop loss. Once the trade is placed, I can go ahead and adjust the take profit and stop loss accordingly, all right? So after you made your decision, you can open short, okay? Open short meaning that you are predicting that the market will go low or you can open long. Open long means that you are predicting that the market will go up, all right? So basically that is everything you need to know here. But um, the issue now comes, you don't just wake up, okay? Maybe because people are talking about the market and the rest and then you just run into the market, all right? For instance, if anybody saw that Luna was, you know, going high and high, that Luna has moved by 200% and then the person started buying right now, you'll be regretting why you are buying. You see what is happening right here? Okay, you see what is happening right here? For those of you who have been, you know, part of my meetings where I talk about RSI, you see, if I hover over this RSI here, now Luna uh, just rose from, 
um, less than two dollars. Okay, in just few hours or there about in less than an hour or so, it rose from uh, like less than two dollars to around close to eight dollars or there about. Okay, this is seven dollars plus. Now, when it started rising, the RSI started moving. The RSI limit is hundred. Okay, when it's going up or the overbought level, okay, it cannot go above 100. Neither will the oversold level go below zero, okay? So if you have seen this, instead of buying right here, now that RSI is 99 going to 100, you don't buy here. If you do this, you'll be making mistake because what the RSI is simply telling you here is that there is every tendency that this market will start reversing from here. Though the default RSI considers um, from anything from 70, okay, above is considered overbought, and then anything from 30 below is considered oversold, all right? So that is exactly what happened there when it was overbought, okay, RSI went to 99 to 100, and then the market started reversing back. So when you see things like this, you don't just enter because every other person is entering, okay? You, you know, you, you, you have to be strategic about this and then take the opposite direction once you get all of this confirmation using indicators. All right, so that is where the indicator stop now coming. Right, when you want to add your indicator, I have my RSI here already. By default, this is not how it looks like. So if I go ahead and close it, um, once I want to add my indicator, all I need to do is to come in here to this icon. Let me highlight that. This is the indicator icon. Okay, click on it. So if I hover over that icon, I just circled now. You see, it tells you technical indicator. All right, there are hundreds or thousands of these indicators. All right, you can't exhaust them all. That is why there is no one like one straight strategic um, or trading strategy that you can say this is what I want to, or this is what is working for everybody. Okay, what is working for Mr. A may not be working for Mr. B, depending on how you use them. Okay, and the techniques you apply to them. So there are a, whole, a lot of indicators that you use about one of the most common indicators you can use to do simple analysis as a lay person who is just starting up in the market is the RSI, okay? So if I type in RSI here, you see it says the Relative Strength Index. That is the full name or full meaning of that RSI. So go ahead and click on it and it will be plotted into your chart. This is what it looks like, okay? So um, I will adjust this so that you'll be able to see it. And to adjust that, once I hover over it, you see where this RSI is saying 14, hover over it and click on the um, setting icon here. So once I click on that, it pops up this way, okay? So here on the input, you don't need to do anything. Leave the length as 14. This is just the default and it works very well. It has been working for me. Then come to the style where you see plot change the plot, change this to white so that you'll be able to see it. Once you change it to white, you want to scroll down here. Okay, let me scroll down and then make the line thicker. Just pay attention to this line here. So if I click on the next one, it makes it thicker. If I click, okay, on the next one, it makes it thicker. All right, and then this is the default setting for the RSI. That's the default setting for the RSI. The 70 level is considered overbought. So meaning that Whenever the market is trading at the top here, it is telling you that this market is overbought. There is every probability that it will start reversing backward, okay? And then if it is trading below 30, it's equally telling you that the market is oversold. There is every probability that buyers will start coming into the market and start pushing the market upward, all right? So that is how the, the simple way you use this indicator. After you finish adjusting them, okay, you can go ahead and click on okay. All right, so just click on okay, and this is our RSI, okay? So here we can now use this to make the um, decisions we want. Another thing you need to know here is what we call time frames. okay? There are different time frames you can analyze the market with, all right? And it starts from, it starts from like one second upward and the rest, okay? But normally um, I do one minute, Anything from one minute to around 30 minutes is considered shorter time frame. And then anything from one hour and above are considered longer time frame. Now, how do you use this time frame? If you're a day trader, okay, if you are just scalping the market, and scalping the market means that you want to make profit within short movement of the market. You don't want to stay long, you don't want to stay for a whole day, you don't want to stay for a whole week or a whole month before you make profit. All right. 
when with the little movement okay this zigzag movement of the market all right this is what you want to take advantage of you want to be making profit that is what scalping is so if you are doing that you should be trading with lower time frame okay lower time frame so any of the time frame you decide to go with works you know in accordance with the rsi so if i come in here these are my time frames okay so these are all the time frames you have here all right so anyone you don't see here, just click on the arrow here and it will review the rest of the time frame okay so if i want to go to one minute time frame i'll just hover over the arrow and then i'll click on the one minute time frame so once i click on the one minute time frame you see that the rsi is equally plotted according to what we are seeing here let me just maximize this so that you'll be able to see this well okay so to make this full screen um this chart full screen just click on this icon here okay and then it makes it full screen so that you'll be able to analyze and uh, okay so that you'll be able to and use it and analyze the market and remember we are on the one minute time frame okay so somewhere around here you see okay when the market gets down here you see equalizer goes with this it tells you that this is overbought because it is shooting be at outside of you know the 30 level so it shoots at, outside the 30 level meaning that this market is overbought all right so this way you'll be looking for a buy opportunity so if you have entered the market somewhere or maybe you entered here when it was trading around this area okay you entered here you would have entered this market and predicted that the market was going up and then make profit with this little move in the market that is what scalping is you are not looking for bigger profit okay but if you want to make more um, uh, bigger profit um let's say with this little move let me even get the measurement too and show you okay with this little move this is what we're going to measure all right so with this little move let's see how many percentage that is if i bring the long position too okay and then i plot it up down here so if i move this upward there okay that is about 0.57 percent okay that is 0.57 percent now the difference comes in with the amount of money you are putting in somebody who risks a thousand dollars two thousand dollars or even five thousand dollars in this little move which is this 0.5 percent okay the return the person will get based on the leverage the person is using is going to be higher than the person who risks just twenty dollars in this little move okay the person who is twenty dollars may be making like a cent depending on the leverage the person is using that is why those of you who ask how much will i be making if i have hundred dollars it is fisher's trading i cannot uh, categorically tell you this is how much you can make but I have made more than $50. I have made more than $100 just risking $20. It all depends on the opportunity you see in the market. That is per trade, okay? So you would have followed this trend. This is on the one minute time frame, okay? So you, um, I'm just doing on the one minute time frame. but normally, um, preferably, what I do is do this on, you know, either the five minutes or the 15 minutes time frame. So if I wanna change from one minute, I can go to the five minutes time frame. All right, and then you see that the movement from the five minutes time frame is equally different. Okay, so here um, we we have this movement somewhere around here. So here this area is for me is considered overbought here. So if I've entered this trade here, I would have just followed the trend until maybe when I got when it gets um, when the market got to this overbought level here. Okay, you see that it's overshooting here. So if you have seen this, you would have said, oh, the market is overbought. You go ahead and follow the trend and you would have taken profit somewhere around there. But if you want to wait longer, you would have just followed and then maybe taking profit down there, okay? But for scalpers, you don't need to wait for too long. Just take those little, little profit. And then if you do that for like 10 times, let's say you're making $1 to $2, $3, $3 every trade and you carry out 10 trades in a day, you understand? That is what you'll be making. If you carry out 20 trades in a day, that is what you'll be making, all right? So now here it is overbought, all right? And then we'll enter the trade somewhere around here. So if I bring the measurement to again, I just go ahead. This is where you get your long and you know, short position to just you know enter the market around there. And then we'll follow this trend somewhere down up there. That is over 3%, okay, 2.8%. Um, in the market. You can imagine if you are putting in like 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or 5,000 in this trade, okay? 
um, that is what you would have made. You would have made some percentage for yourself. All right. So that is just the simple way of using the RSI. You can use it on the five minutes time frame. You order all the time frame you can think of. Okay, if I go to the four hours time frame, the RSI works in accordance with the time frame. Okay. So um this is it right here. It didn't hit the overbought level, it just you know crosses this middle band and then it started reversing back and so on and stuff like that. So here it did. Okay. Another thing you should note, if I bring my short position to, for instance, here, though it didn't hit the overbought level as we ought to, okay? Um, this area here was not overbought because this is where our RSI was, okay? But this area was oversold. Let's say we took this trade, okay? Somewhere around here. Now, because we are on the one hour time frame, one thing I want you to pay attention to is that the, the longer you stay in the market, the higher your time frame, the higher the profit you start to make, okay? Let's take a look at the move, this move, how much this would have cost us, okay? This move here, this is from where it was overbought, okay? So let's say we predicted to long the market and then we ended the trade here. Let me just show you the difference between a longer time frame and a shorter time frame. So I come in here and bring the long position to, and then we enter the trade somewhere here. So if I bring this up this way, okay, you see that this is 11% move in the market. And the reason for this is because we are doing this on a higher time frame. So on the higher time frame, you have the potential and opportunity of making bigger money than you know just scalping the market. Scalping the market, um, the money comes in um, big when you do it again and again. But when you do it on a higher time frame, you just trade, even if it is once in a week, once in a day, and you get a successful trade, you are good for that week. And you can go relax your head somewhere in the beach, enjoy yourself, and then wait for another opportunity to, you know, um, enter the market again. All right. So basically, that is everything you need to know about futures trading um, on the Binance Exchange. Now with this now, you see that on the four hours time frame here, we're on the four hours, right? The market is beginning to approach the overbought level, okay? The market is beginning to approach the overbought level. So what I can do right here, I'm going to enter this market with a limit order, with a market order, okay? So first, but first I will need to bring in my short position too because I'm gonna short the market, okay? I'm just doing this for to demonstrate this, okay? To show you what um, I can do whenever I want to enter a trade. And then my, um, my intention is to make profit when the market gets to this level, all right? Let me expand this again before I bring it back. So this is on the four hours time frame. If this market does not stop from here, if it doesn't go further from here, I'm assuming that if it reverses, it could come down a little bit, okay? Because this is already going to hit the over um bot level all right uh all right though it has not shoot out yet but i'm sure that just like this one the market may you know retrace back to the middle here before it goes up all right so i just want to use this to demonstrate a trade for you so that you know how this works now um let's say you don't have a signal nobody's giving you any signal you want to determine where to set your stop loss and you take profit you use this tool because i'm shorting the market we have Long position when you are predicting that the market will go up, short position when you are predicting that the market will go down. So since I'm predicting that the market will go down, I'll bring this down here. I don't want it to be you know, too low. So I'll bring it down somewhere around here. This is around 8%. I'm predicting if the market moves 8% downward, I should be taking profit, okay? So, and then I will assume that my stop loss will be you know, somewhere around here. Um, somewhere around here, okay? That's where my stop loss is going to be. Now, what I want you to pay attention to, if you are using limit order, okay? If you check here, this is where our stop loss will be, okay? So if I, where I pointed, this is the price we are going to put as a stop loss. If you are using limit order, this is going to be our entering price. So we use this as our entering price. And then to take profit will now be the green option below. So if I bring this down, Okay, so our take profit will now be here. All right, so we'll follow this one. This price is going to be our take profit. This is what you're going to plot into your, you know, your trade. Okay, 
So as I said earlier, we're going to use limit order. We are doing this only four hours, okay? So we're going to use market order to place this trade. So all I need to do now is I'm using 40S leverage and then I want to trade. I just click on the market order. Then I want to trade one Ethereum. Go ahead and select one Ethereum, okay? I don't need to push take profit because I'm using market order or grabber. So I go ahead and open short, okay? So I go ahead and open short. The trade has been placed successfully. Now, because the trade has been placed, it's already showing up here, okay? The trade, whenever you see green, it is profit. When you see red, it is you know, running in losses, all right? So now we use what we are trading one Ethereum and then we use 40X leverage, okay? This is our entering price. This is our current price. For as long as this market price is lower than this one, we'll continue to be in profit. When the market price is higher than this, then we are in losses. So now Ethereum is telling us because we are using 40 years leverage, we'll get liquidated when the market goes to 1,756, okay? So if we get liquidated, I am going to lose this $19. This is what it cost me to open this position. I am going to lose this $19 if we get liquidated, all right? So how do I avoid this liquidation? Because the price is too close to our entering price, okay? The price is too close. So how do we avoid this? That is when adding margin now comes in play, okay? So that is when you, you sorry, this is the percentage, this is margin rate, um, percent, ratio percentage. This is the margin, the what it costs us, this um, $42, that is what it costs us. So if we get liquidated, we're going to lose $42. Now, the reason for losing this $42 is because we are using um, isolated, okay? It's because we are using isolated mode, which you can see, okay? Um, all right, it's not showing up here, but because we are using isolated mode, we cannot lose the whole of our account balance. We are going to lose only this $40, $42, okay? That's what we're going to lose. So what I can do to increase this liquidation price Okay, I don't want to get liquidated anytime soon. To increase that, I'm going to add margin. This is your margin. This is what it costs to open this position. Okay, if I add margin, it will not add up to the profit I will make. The profit will still be calculated with this initial margin, which is $42. Even if I like, let me add $1,000 here. The only thing that adding margin can do is to push this liquidation further. All right, it will push it further and the rest and nothing less. It cannot add up here. Even if this market goes to 100%, the profit will still be calculated with this initial margin, which is the $42, all right? So if I want to add margin, I just go ahead and click on this icon here that says edit. So let's just go ahead and click on that. And then how much do I want to add? Let me add like um, 200. Okay, so if I add $200, I'll go ahead and click on confirm, all right? So you see that instead of getting liquidated at 1,750 something now, we can only get liquidated when the market gets to 1,955, okay? And then you see that our margin has increased, but the profit did not increase. So the profit is still being calculated with the initial $42 that we enter the market with, okay? So this add margin stuff of the thing, those of you who are using it is not adding up to the profit, but it only adds to you know, the, the liquidation. This is what it only affects, okay? So what you can do if you want it to be adding up, whenever it gets close to your liquidation price, you can open additional trade and stuff like that. But that is an advanced means of trading. So um, it's not recommended so that you don't end up losing the your entire account, okay? Now, I didn't say take profit and stop loss, okay? So what I can do now is to click on this icon here. You see at the top, you say take profit for this position. So I just click on the pencil icon here to edit our take profit and stop loss level. So if I click on it, this is where I'm going to put my take profit. All right, where do I want to take profit? If Ethereum gets down to 1,000, let's say um, 500, okay? It means that if it gets to 1,500, we're going to be making 22, $222, all right? So where do I want to set, set my stop loss? I will set my stop loss when um, Ethereum gets to 1,000, um, let's say 800. Okay, if it gets to 1,800, we are going to lose $77. Once you are okay with that, go ahead and click on confirm. All right, so um, once you click on confirm, that will be placed, meaning that if Ethereum gets to this level, 
we are no, you know, instead of losing the whole of the 200 we have here, if he hits our stop loss, then the trade will be closed. We just lose 77. Then if he hits our take profit, you know, then the trade will be closed and then we'll get to make how much? $222 in the market, all right? So um, that is everything I need to explain to you here. And uh, your questions will now make me, you know, explain every other thing that I, I did not uh, mention here initially. Okay, so that is everything you need to know about Binance Futures Trading. If you have questions, you have contributions, I know additions to what I've said, it is now time you can unmute yourself. You can use the chat section or just raise up your hand and let's take it up from there.